All right, I have a, min a minute after one. I think I'll get us started here. So this is Ed Crow. Uh, today we're going to go over the AHIP certification, the 2022 version. The a lot of people I know have their AHIP completed at this point. Um, if you haven't, uh, for AAP, you have until basically the last day of September to do it um, for AAP, because um, technically to be able to market the 22, 22 plans, which you can do, do starting October 1st, you have to have AHIP completed uh, and certs done. You can't take an app until October 15th, but you, you can't market plans, the 22 2022 plans until your certification for any given company is completed. So again, um, a lot of people are done, but there's certainly plenty who uh, haven't done their AHIP yet, so I wanted to do a review. So a couple quick things. Uh, if you haven't joined us before, we record all our webinars. So you'll get the recording if you just register. So future reference, we do these every Wednesday and Thursday at 1 o'clock on various topics. But for future reference, if you want to watch one of our webinars but can't make the time, just register and you'll get the recording. And then also, if you have any questions, and something like this might generate some questions, um, just send them into the webinar, and I will answer them for you at the end. So other than that, I think we should get started here. So we'll talk about who needs AHIP, um, just general ideas, just general information about accessing the certification. I've done AHIP a lot of years in a row, so this kind of gets to be second nature after you've done it enough. Uh, changes uh, they've made to the course and to the review questions. Uh, probably the most helpful thing here will be the strategies uh, for the modules and exams. This test is actually very easy if you know what you're looking for when you do it. Uh, and then what you need to do when you're done with it. So as I mentioned, a couple quick reminders. Like I said, we do webinars every Wednesday and Thursday at 1. Even uh, this year, during AEP, once that starts, we We'll probably go to doing them every two weeks or something just because people are busy. Uh, so we usually don't get very good attendance at that point. Um, if you aren't using Sunfire or Connect for Medicare, uh, Connecture, um, you should. Um, we offer both systems to people at no cost, to agents at no cost. You can save your drug lists on there. You can submit applications, uh, text or email. You don't have to be face-to-face. -face. It will save and search doctor lists. It'll show you plans, even the plans that Agents can't sell plans we don't have. Uh, there's two functions there where you can just see what you're certified to sell, or you can see everything. You can only enroll through the things, only enroll people in the plans that you're certified to sell, however. But if you haven't used either system, I uh, strongly suggest you try them. It'll save you a lot of time. And it um, also is a CR, they're both CRMs as well. So uh, a lot of functions there, a lot of value in both those programs, and it costs you nothing to use them. Uh, use our quote and comparison site if you haven't before. That's on uh, pfsinsurance.com, and that'll quote everything for you. So you can quote and compare advantage, supplement part D, final expense, indemnity, the annuity uh, quote engines, immensely valuable, uh, term and UL. You can quote everything with all carriers in there. So if you aren't using it, it can be a big time saver for you. A uh, quick reminder about our lead program. So we have a program that is available to all agents that have their Medicare contracts with us. Um, they will reimburse agents for leads, marketing, advertising, anything to generate Medicare sales. It's a 100% match for the first six months you use it, 100% match up to 500 per month. Uh, thereafter, and this goes for any agent that's been with us regardless of how, how long, it's a 50% match, still up to 500 paid to you a month. Um, in the Sam's Club's locations, um, it's kind of old news, um, they were available, but they've just announced that they rescinded those. However, one quick update is, depending on the state you're in, um, we did get a list of 15 Walmart stores that have already been paid for. None in Connecticut. I see some Connecticut people on here, but none in Connecticut, but in various other states. Uh, and those Walmarts are free. Uh, first come, first serve. They were 1500 bucks, but for somebody who wants to pick one of them up, um, there'll be no cost this year for you if you want them. Okay, so go over AHIP. So what is AHIP? So AHIP is just a, a company um, that created uh, America. It, the company is called America's Health Insurance Plans. They use the acronym AHIP for short. For short. Uh, they created a, a training module, and it, it took off, and the carriers all started adopting it. Um, so they're an organization that provides training. Uh, they got, I guess, fortunate in a regard that they created AHIP, and everybody just kind of used that then as the benchmark uh, for what you need, and all the carriers adopted it. So, you know, good uh, good job on their part, uh, 
IAHIP anyway. Um, so most Medicare Advantage and Part D companies have made AHIP certification a requirement. So not only do you have to do their certification, they're, they're one specific to them, but you need an overall AHIP certification every year to sell their plans. Um, and just to clarify how that works is if you've done AHIP, you can continue to sell plans for this year if you did the 2021 AHIP. But again, when October 1 comes and you're talking to people about the 2022 plans, you need the 2022 AHIP to do that. You can't talk about 2022 plans on October 1st unless you've completed AHIP with most of the carriers. Uh, I mentioned in here there seems to be a trend uh, where carriers now, examples are Emblem and Connecticut, Humana, uh, where they're saying, well, if you've done AHIP, um, then to do our certification, there is no test. You just have to click through the slides, which I really strongly feel they all should adopt, uh, especially somebody like me who, you know, I have to do 30-some certs every year. So hopefully that trend continues. Um, and, you know, the point is if you've completed AHIP, it makes sense. Why would you have to do additional tests that's just redundant and repetitive? So hopefully they continue to go in that direction. So you need AHIP to sell MA, MAPD, PDP, cost plans, not many of those left anymore, private fee for service plans, same thing, kind of a kind of going extinct, uh, and MSA plans. So all companies basically require AHIP to sell those products. You don't need AHIP for Medicare supplements. Um, one exception to this rule, however, though, is United Healthcare. Uh, whether a lot of people don't realize United, they don't require AHIP. So you could, as an agent, you could do the United certifications for UHC and sell their Advantage Part D and supplement all from doing their cert. So the Advantage and Part D, you do not need AHIP. So sometimes with agents that are new to the business, um, we'll tell them, well, you know, if you really are worried about doing certifications and the time you have available, just do United. Then you can do the AARP supplements. You can do their drug plans and MAPDs. Uh, and then if you want to add a couple other supplement plans, they don't require certs anyway, so you can just add them. So basically, you can offer all lines of business, and you don't need AHIP. Medicare supplements, as I just said, they don't require annual certifications or AHIP, with the one exception of, while United doesn't require AHIP, to sell the United AARP supplements, you do have to do a cert. They're the only supplement like that. So if you got to do it anyway, you might as well do United's whole cert and be able to sell their Advantage and Part Ds as well. But they require certification to sell AARP. So I just mentioned that strategy about how you can, you know, use United Healthcare without the need to do AHIP. Um, and that, again, it works for new agents. It's a good strategy. So AHIP comes out late June every single year. It does cover you for the remainder of the year. So my point there is if you're new, you haven't taken AHIP yet, and it's June, July, August. Um, this year, for example, uh, we get the mistake people make of they'll take the 2021, not realizing that once the 2022 is out, if they take it in June, July, August, September, October, whatever it may be, it covers them for the rest of the year. So they don't, you know, sometimes they needlessly take both versions, and they don't need to. The best way to access AHIP is through the carrier sites carrier certification sites. So what you shouldn't do is go through ahipmedicaretraining.com. Um, if you go through the AHIP site, you pay $175 for AHIP. If you take it through one of the carrier certs, like United, Aetna, Humana, any of them for that matter, Anthem, uh, you can access AHIP through them. AHIP still counts for all the companies. It doesn't matter who you access it through. But taking it through the carriers gives you a discount of $125, so it saves you a little money on the cost. There are some companies that will pay for the total cost of AHIP, depending on how much business you've ridden during the year. Aetna is a prime example of that. I think it, last year was 20 cases. I forget how many it's going to be this year. Uh, but you already would have been notified. But if you wrote enough Aetna cases, you get front runner, and then you pay nothing for AHIP. So you take it through Aetna's certification portal. And if you're a front runner because you wrote enough cases with them, you wouldn't be charged for AHIP. So AHIP will auto-complete some prerequisite courses for some carriers, most of them uh, at this point. But as an example, if you access AHIP, even though United doesn't require it, that you can still take AHIP through United, 
but if you access AHIP3 United and take it, it will do the prereq courses for you so you won't have to complete them. So if you're taking AHIP through a carrier, um, make sure you do the AHIP module first before you start the carrier certs, the reason being if you complete AHIP or if you transmit AHIP to that carrier, it will complete the prereqs and then you won't have to take them. But if you start taking those first before you do AHIP or transmit it, um, they're going to make you do them. So it'll, it's going to waste some time if you do it that way. So just especially for United, when you go into their cert, go right to AHIP first before you do anything else. So if you're going to access the certification through UHC, for example, you got to log in as an individual, not an agency. So, for example, I own Crone Associates. Um, if I log in to Jarvis with UHC as Crone Associates, there's no cert option for me. Uh, that's because I have to log in in my Jarvis as an individual because you get two separate. When you have a licensed entity, you get two separate Jarvis logins. Just make sure you do the individual one, and that way you'll be able to take your certification as an individual. You can't do it as an agency. When you're in there and you access AHIP through United or any of the companies for that matter, it will automatically route you to the AHIP site. If you've not yet done this, if you go into AHIP, um, you're going to have to reset your password. Uh, if you haven't been in there since 5.10 of 21, they're going to automatically redo the password. And, you know, fun, the new one has got to be a minimum of 12 characters. Um, I can't remember what I had for breakfast this morning, so that makes it tough. I guess you just got to jot it down. So let's talk about the courses. It is, for those who took AHIP last year, it's the same general setup. Same thing, five modules. So you have five set modules, um, overview of basics, choices, eligibility, and benefits, module on health plans, PDP, marketing, and enrollment guidance. So same thing, five separate modules. Uh, at the end of completing all five modules, there's 50 questions on the test, and you need a minimum score of 90% to pass. So I guess they're telling us as insurance agents, we need to be right 90% of the time uh, when we're out there. When you're done with the test, just remember you're not done. Um, I like to think that every year. But once you pass your 50-question uh, test, you still ha have to do the the other trainings that aren't, aren't as difficult, but the other trainings, non-discrimination, fraud, waste, and abuse, compliance, and general compliance. And you only need a 70% score on those, and those tests are only 10 questions each. So just make sure you complete those. Again, same as last year, the questions are all multiple choice. That hasn't changed, 50 questions. Um, if you fail three times, you're gonna have to buy AHIP again and be aware of that. If you fail three times, you'll go pay for the course again, so you get three more attempts. But there are some companies that if you've failed three times, even if you buy the course again and pass on the fourth or fifth or sixth try, um, they're not going to let you write for them for 2022 because you failed it three times. So really important to, to pass it in the first three tries. If you try it once and fail, take a break. Don't just launch into it again. Um, a lot of people do that. Uh, but what you can do is if you fail one time, take a break, call us. We can talk to you about it. Uh, there's people here. There's people at Pinnacle. Uh, they can give you some advice um, just so you don't get those three fails. So, again, the format is the same as last year, but the key pieces of it are the 50-question test. It's comprised of the sample questions on the five modules. So when you take each module, a couple things. When you take the module, at the end, they're going to have sample questions, um, module questions. Those questions are the exact same questions that will be on the test. You might get a couple stray ones here and there on the test, like three or four that weren't on the module, module questions, but they're pretty much an identical match. They're worded very similar, sometimes exactly the same. So long story short, when you're doing the sample questions on the modules, make sure you pay attention to the answers. It will give you what the right answer is if you answer wrong. And just commit those to memory because you're going to see them again on the test um, when you take it. So the test is 50 questions. They give you two hours to complete it. That's usually not a problem at all. Uh, they're very straightforward with a couple of just weird exceptions. On, there were a couple of questions that were kind of strange. Uh, but as I mentioned, once you're done with the test, you got to take the other three courses. Um, just don't forget to do those. Um, and if you took the, if you had AHIP for 2021, 
one thing that can save you some time is if you took 2021 AHIP, you only have to click through modules four and five. You don't have to click through one, two, and three. So you can skip one through three. They're still going to test you on questions based from the sample questions on all five modules. But again, if you want to just click through four and five, it'll save you some time. One thing, though, if you're going to do that, so if you plan on doing that, you still want to go in at least go into modules one through three, because what's important is when you go in there, on the top right-hand corner, when you go in each module, they'll give you the option of saving the PDF of the module. I strongly suggest you do that. So save the PDF for all five modules on your desktop, because it is completely compliant for you then to use Control F when you're taking your test and search for information on those five modules you've saved on your desktop. I know some agents say they print all of them, it's completely unnecessary. I mean, that's a lot of paper and ink. You don't need to print them. Just save them on your desktop, and then you can control F and search for answers when you're taking your test. But if you're skipping four and five, uh, skipping modules one through three, just go into them for a minute just to save the PDF. So there are a couple odd, tricky questions, as I mentioned. Um, one to keep note of, and it's not in the sample questions. I mean, when you take this test, like 46 of your questions will be off the sample questions from the modules. There's a few that aren't. One of them was an original Medicare one, and it mentions in there, um, no cost for preventive. Well, I think of original Medicare as really not co covering much of anything preventative, so that kind of threw me a little. Um, but they're going with the theme of that original Medicare covers preventative services at no cost. So just something to keep in mind. And then there's obviously the new rule for at-risk beneficiary. Um, that was a new one to me as well. If somebody is designated an at-risk population or at-risk beneficiary, they do not have a special election, even if they're a dual eligible. So keep that in mind as well. There will be a question on there, and you might get it. A question that says, this person has been deemed an at-risk member, at-risk beneficiary. Uh, they're a dual eligible, they want to make a plan change, uh, can you change them, change their plan? You logically think they're a dual, I've got a special election, I can change them, but they can't because they are been defined as at risk. Last one that I thought was pretty interesting was, there's a question on there about, um, you called somebody in August and they're Medicare eligible in November, uh, and it was saying basically, you know, or said they're turning. I apologize. I said they're they're turning 65 in August. Or I'm sorry. They, they called you in August that they're eligible for Medicare in November, and it asks when should you meet with them and write an app for them. Well, they have an election for August, but that's the wrong answer. They think because you're so close to October 1st when they'll see the new plans for 2022 that you should wait till then. So, just throwing that out there. There's a topic about dialysis. Remember, you've got to be on dialysis for four months before you're eligible for Medicare. And also remember that private fee-for-service plans allow 15% balance billing, um, something that we don't run into that often, especially if you're in a state without a private fee-for-service plan. Anyway, there's it's some random stuff um, that you might get wrong. I think most of these things are on the practice questions, so even if you answer them wrong on the practice questions, they'll show you the right answer, but just pay attention to them and be on the lookout for them. So as I mentioned before, download the PDF of each module. Um, even if you're not taking one, two, and three, just go in and download it. Uh, save them on your desktop, and then when you're taking the test, um, you can use Control F to find the term you need to get to the section of the module you need to get the answer. Um, that's completely, it's an open book test, so you're allowed to do that. The biggest issue I see with people who have trouble with the test is just not reading the question well. I think we're all maybe in such a hurry to get through it. Um, and this sounds very obvious, but it's just so common. Uh, I think we're in such a hurry to get through that we just don't read the question well. And I would strongly suggest just take time reading the question. Make sure it's not like a double negative, but saying all but these things, you know, Read the question, because that, that is the, the biggest problem I see people have. Uh, use a reliable computer and internet connection. Um, that happens a lot. I get people saying, well, I was almost done, and you know, I lost my internet, or my computer froze, or that counts as a fail. So you got to complete the test. Uh, when you go in it, you got to complete it. 
So make sure you have reliable internet, reliable computer, because um, that'll count as a fail, and they won't care. Um, you know, if you said you lost internet or your computer broke, if you fail three times, you're going to have to buy the exam again, and uh, a couple of the companies are not going to let you write. Okay, so assuming you take the test, you go through, no problem. When you're done, the one thing you got to do is click on the transcript button. So you click on that, and then you are going to um, get a copy of your course certificate. So saying you've completed AHIP, save that so you have it. Some of the carriers might want to see it. Um, and the other thing, most of the carriers won't, though, because you can click also on the Medicare course home button, and you can transmit your result to the other carriers. So whatever carriers you're contracted with for Advantage or PDP, it'll be a list of them when you scroll down, and you can transmit your completed AHIP results to them so then they know you've done it, and they'll have that show when you go in the cert. There's a couple carriers that won't do that, a couple smaller ones, and that's why you really should keep um, the PDF of your course completion certificate on your computer so you can send it when, when needed. But nonetheless, when you want to transmit, you just go down, you'll see all the carrier lists for the companies you're set up with, and just click on Transmit Results to send them the results of your AHIP. The CE credit option, people have a lot of different ideas with this. Um, so they give you an option to get CE credits for taking AHIP. I'm not crazy about it. It's 30 bucks. Uh, and it only gives you five to eight credits depending on the state you're in. My suggestion to get CEs is use an online vendor like WebC. I mean, for like $25, you can get all the CEs you need for your state to meet the requirement. So spending the 30 bucks for the five to eight on AHIP, uh, to me, doesn't make sense, but I leave that up to you. A lot of talk about NAHU re recently, and because NAHU now has uh, their version of the AHIP certification. Um, most carriers are accepting it, so I know some people prefer NAHU as an organization. Um, I would probably put myself in that category, um, but uh, I took AHIP this year because not everybody's accepting NAHU. So... You've got a couple carriers out there that aren't accepting it um, as a replacement for AHIP, so I think you got to take AHIP unless you want to do multiple certs. Um, I would think next year for 2023, they'll probably all be on board, and then a a taking NAHU instead would be an option. Okay, compensation. So you, you got to be ready to sell uh, to get commission. So people will say to themselves, well, you know, I'm not going to do my cert for this company this year, but you got to keep in mind, if you have renewals on the books, you really are forced to do it if you want to get paid, because they're not going to pay you your renewals if you haven't completed AHIP and the certification for that carrier. Uh, this can create a big hassle for agencies, and I'll just give you a quick example of that. Let's say somebody owns an insurance agency. Um, they're going to be the upline for a bunch of agents, but the person that owns the agent, agency doesn't write any business. So they'll think, well, you know, I don't need to do AHIP or do my certifications. I'm not writing, and they're wrong. In order for overrides to be paid, in order for their downline agents to get paid, um, they have to do their certifications. So, for example, you know, we have agencies and agents um, with Crow. I have to do the certs every year um, in order for everybody to get paid, for Crow to get overrides. Um, so that comes up sometimes, especially with agency owners. And just remember, Medicare supplements don't require certs or AHIP. United Healthcare is the only exception to that. With their AARP supplements, um, they require you to do the United Cert to write AARP plans. That's it. I appreciate you joining us today. We'll see if we have any questions. Um, I'll send this uh, recording out to everybody. And uh, if you have any qu contracting questions, a couple things we can. You can just call us if you want to add carriers. If you've never done a contracting kit with us, we can do it electronically now, so we can send you a link. Um, we'd like to use a kit that agents fill out, and that way you can ask for any carriers you want down the road. Um, you don't have to send us any additional information. You just call it and let us know who you want. Uh, but we do have an electronic version as well now that you can do if you'd like. All right, let's see what we have for questions here. Okay, so the question is, when you do the module, can you take notes, and is there a time limit? So, okay, so yes, yeah, certainly when you do the modules, each module you can take notes. There is not a time limit for the modules, so you can take as long as you want to read through them. 
and then the questions at the end of each module are not timed either because um, they're not really part of the test. They're just practice questions. Uh, and again, my suggestion would be just save the module to your desktop um, so that what, way when you take the test, you have the module saved. But no, there is no limit, and yes, you certainly could take notes if you want. But there's no need to print the whole thing. Just save it. Uh, do we have any other questions? Let's see. It looks like that's all we have for questions. So I appreciate you joining me today, and I hope everybody has a, a great weekend coming up, and we will get this recording out to you. Thanks. Have a great day.